Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm Travis Sylvester and today we're going to show you guys how to light up some paint. As you guys can tell, we're in the paint booth again. We're going to be laying down some Lumilor now. Out of all the paints, candy paints, pearl paints, metallics, silvers, you name it, this stuff has been the most challenging. It's been very rewarding, don't get me wrong, but I get a lot of questions on, is that glow-in-the-dark paint? No, it is not. This is actually electrified. We are going to put electricity into this panel and make this light. The whole logo, everything you see in blue, the letters, the border, and we're going to show you guys every step of the way that we go through and do Lumilor. How Lumilor works, you have four different coatings, and of the four coatings, we're going to be using the back plane twice. So you have five different layers that is going to make up what I call a circuit board that we're going to be mapping out and putting together on this panel. The first one we're going to be doing is back plane. It needs to be about three good coats to get connectivity and we're going to be checking ohms resistance across the panel. So this is very different than any kind of custom paint that you guys are used to doing. I have heard the best of the best custom painters say, oh, I've got this down, but you have to change your thinking on this a bit because you're now dealing with electrical circuits and if you do something where it's maybe too blotchy or not enough coating or you didn't get coverage, you end up scrapping everything in the end of the day. So there's a lot of things that go into consideration to be able to do this paint and that's why it's been very rewarding when you actually do pull it off. So we're going to get into doing back plane. We're going to map out. That's what you're seeing in the red. It does not have to be perfect in this stage because we're lighting an area bigger than what we need by about a quarter inch. So once we get this sprayed, we're going to be laying down our connection for our wires with some copper tape that goes around the edge of this bedside. And then we will be connecting wires on the backside later in the video. But we're going to get into mapping this out, spray it, and we're going to show you guys how to check Ohm's resistance. <laughs> got three coats as even as we could through with back plane and then we're going to be using a multimeter on the ohms uh, resistance to check how much resistance we have you need a good path just like you have an electrical wire check your meter and make sure that you have connectivity and that everything works and beeps and then what we're going to do is go down from farthest point to farthest point I always like to come in where the connection is with the copper wire and go to the farthest point. That way you know you have connectivity. If your reading is jumping all over the place, then your back plane is not dry enough. And if it's too high, you want to be 10 ohms or less. If it's too high, you need to put more coats on so that way you can get your ohm reading down. Otherwise, from the very get-go, you've already lost the battle. Now that we have our back plane done for the stage one, we're going to move into our dielectric. Your dielectric is, in a sense, it is the insulation on a copper wire to make sure that if we called this positive and negative for like a light bulb, your positive and negative does not short. That's what dielectric is. It is insulating from one coating to the other. We are going to be spraying the back plane again towards the end of this project. We are going to then unmask this now and we are going to be taking a plastic razor blade and shaving the edge that sticks up along your tape line down. 
We have also stayed away from our edges. We've masked them all off because those sharp edges of the panel will create a short later on in the project as well. So we're gonna unmask this thing for you guys. We're gonna go through, if you do dielectric with too many coats, you will create a dark spot. So it needs to be three very even coats. If you have areas that have multiple angles to it, you need to try and spray that as even as you can without creating more and more, just like a candy. If you have a candy area that you spray and it's coming too heavy over one panel to the other, it's going to create a dark candy. Same concept, dark lighted area. All right, we've got three coats of dielectric down. We went over the do's and don'ts of that already, and we went beyond our back plane. Now we're going to be diving into the Luma color. This is the white Luma color. There are eight different choices you can choose with Lumilor, and it's just the color that it's going to be naturally lit. We wanted this bright. There are other colors that may be brighter than white, like the green or the blue. However, this is where it becomes important we are going to be spraying this in the booth with the lights off. And what you'll see is a whole bunch of little particles. This is a phosphoric coating, so I read. And then we're going to be trying to spray this as even and as uniform as possible, checking with our black light as we paint in the dark to be able to see that everything is completely covered and even. At that stage, once we have good coverage, Notice our lead for the very first positive. Like I said, it's not polarity sensitive, but we're gonna call this positive for this purpose, is covered the entire time until you get to the end because we don't wanna have a short that's exposed. But we're gonna come in, we're gonna spray this, and then we'll show you guys how we mask back out and go back to the back plane that we started with. Now that we've got the Luma color done, we've done two passes. You're just looking for uniformity. We did it laterally and horizontally, so that way we did a crosshatch to make sure it's not splotchy. That's the biggest thing, is trying to get something that's uniform. At this point, we are going to be, it's very faint to see this line that goes around the perimeter of this logo, but you need to make sure that you have an eighth inch to a quarter inch of separation. And the reason that is, is because we're coming back in with quote unquote the negative return for this lighted circuit. When you do that, if you had the back plane overlapping the very first coating, which is the same material and they're both conductive, what it's gonna happen is it's going to have a short if your dielectric is not thick enough or you had an area that you missed or whatever it may be. So it's always better to be safe than sorry um, and do your quarter inch separation. When it comes to the bus bar, you need to have a third of the surface area that you're going to be lighting. And you need to make sure that when you do it, you have coverage around the perimeter as best as possible. Yes, you can do a bus bar in one direction feeding over this area that's going to light, but maybe at the bottom area, it might be too dark. So what you're going to do is, in this case, our logo is so big for the panel that we're doing, is that we're going to take these copper tapes and we're going to put one up above and one below, and I'm actually going to tie these two together underneath the back of the panel. That way the bus bar may not have a direct path with the back plane, but electrically you will have it on the back side. And that will give us a good back plane on top and bottom so we have a nice even lit panel.
prior we talked about how the back plane has two leads. Now that it's actually mapped out, you guys can see it, because I don't want to confuse you guys. There is only two wires to connect to this. The only reason we have two on the bus plane, or I'm sorry, the back plane this time, is because on this bus bar, and I know I've said back plane, bus bar, it's the same material, you're just using it twice, one in the beginning and one in the fourth stage. So these two wires with the copper are actually going to be tied together with a jumper in the backside. So there's only a positive and only a negative. Um, we made sure we had about a third of a surface area for the back plane, or I'm sorry, for the bus bar. There I go again. And we're just going to come through. We're going to make sure that from here to here, once we get it sprayed, we have under 10 ohms, and then we're going to continue. Bus bar is completed. We have gone through with the ohms meter and verified that it was under 10 ohms. We connected the back side with some copper tape. And then now we're going to take the inverter from Lumilor. They have a couple different inverters and it all boils down to surface area. This is one of the larger inverters that you can actually adjust the frequency and the voltage. Adjusting the frequency will change the brightness of the white. Sometimes they turn more of a green. You can kind of dial with that and you can also play with the voltage. You just don't want to go so high that you burn through the dielectric layer and burn this panel because what happens is then you got to start over and take all this all the way down. Um, at this point, we're going to hook this inverter up. We've already verified that with the voltmeter that we do not have any path from the first coating to the fourth coating, which is bus bar to the very first one. And that's all checked out. If you test that and you're getting an ohms reading, as soon as you do this final step, you're going to fry the panel because you should not have any connectivity between bus bar and back plane. Even though they're the same materials, you've got to have that separation. So at this point, we're going to grab the conductive top coat. That's going to be the fourth coating, fifth step of the four coatings. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using a LPH 400. You guys can use mini guns. The whole trick here is if you put it on heavy at all, it's going to look splotchy. If this does not light initially, it's not because you need more of it. It takes very little bit of material when you're spraying this. So we're going to be shutting the lights off as best we can in here, getting out a heat gun and or a blow dryer, and we're going to just dust this. Dial your needle all the way back and choke it, and I'm using a 1.3 instead of a 1.4. The last coating, so of the four, the very last one is water-based material where the other three were solvent-based. Um, but it is conductive, so you got to make sure your leads are completely covered. We are going to tape these and make sure that nothing of this material touches any of these wires on the backside. Okay, conductive top coat is completely finished. We, as you guys could see, it does not take much. It was just a dust of a layer. And then as you heat it with the heat gun, in our case, we use the blow dryer, it just starts to light. The more that you have to be consistent with this paint is what's gonna give you a consistently lit area. I would start small if you guys are gonna practice with this stuff. At this point, we have come through from beginning to end with Back plane material being the area that you're going to light, step one. Step two, we did dielectric. That's your insulated coating. 
Step three was the color that you're going to be lighting. In this case, white was the Luma color. And then we laid out our bus bar, which is what you're seeing here in the copper color. We then connected our wires. And the fifth time, we went back through with a conductive top coat. At this point, if you were to turn on the power and touch this, it will shock you because it is an electrical circuit. Um, we have to use a speed clear now. Now that the Lumilor process is done, we are going to speed clear it in. Speed clear is a clear coat that will set up and dry within like 30 minutes where we could actually come in and color sand and polish. But at this point, we want to be putting the clutch and coffee shield over this and what you guys see in blue is going to be backmasked, and then we will black out everything around it. What you're left with is a seamless, no wires showing area that's a logo that's going to light. We've done several different projects now with logos, murals, you name it. What's left is to do our border, paint the rest of the fender white, and clear coat this baby. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please subscribe, like the video, it helps us create more content. And continue to learn, share what you know. We'll see you guys next week.